you are checking out a serum tutorial on ADSR sounds. So in this video, we're going to be talking about this uh, harmonic editor, this partial editor. It's kind of like a baby additive synthesis engine inside of Serum and how you can use it to actually uh, do something that helps sounds rather than just kind of aimlessly play around with it because it is kind of confusing if you've never used an additive synth or you just don't really know what this is for. So to talk about what this is for in the scope of wavetable synthesis, which is what Serum is, you need to have a general understanding of additive synthesis. So additive synthesis is a um, is actually the oldest form of sound synthesis. It predates subtractive synths and obviously wavetables and FM and all that stuff. What it is is uh, it it dates back actually to organs, but it's basically you're building a sound one harmonic at a time. The harmonics you can think of them as the kind of like the DNA, the building blocks of sound. And with harmonics, you get overtones, which kind of shapes the timbre of what our ears perceive and hear. So right now, you can see I'm pushing a key. Uh, there's no sound. So if, if I just do this little block right here, a sine wave magically appears. And if I play a note. So if you don't have a reference point of additive synthesis, you might be wondering why in the world did this turn into a sine wave? And if I do something like this, it's going to start to look like a saw wave, just have some issues because there'll be kind of these like gritty little bumps on it. But they'll have the start to get the tonal characteristics of a saw wave, right? And it has the general shape. It's just if these were all smoothed out, it would be a saw wave. Well, I know this because of just using additive synthesis. So while I'm talking, I'll start to draw in, uh, we'll start to get like a actual kind of like a square wave shape going. But with additive synthesis, the whole thing is you're building a sound one harmonic at a time. So it gives you the utmost control over everything that you're doing. But at the same time, it's kind of hard to recreate sounds like what I'm trying to do right now, where you're trying to create like a basic waveform. It's not that easy. Um, so we're starting to see this, the square shape, right? Again, we have these rough edges. So I know from additive synthesis that all of the uh, our square wave is just the odd harmonics. So I'm on 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and so forth. And I'm purposely skipping all of the even harmonics because I know that will get me to a square shape. Now, it's kind of tough because you have to go out very far with these. You can see this this screen just scrolls on for days. Um, and if you go all the way out, you can actually create these building block sounds like a saw, a sign, or a square. Sign's really easy. You just need one harmonic. But so we're starting to get a square wave. It's starting to sound a little bit like a square wave. You can see the general shape of a square. So if we pull up an actual square wave here in the singles, so you're starting to get that that shape. Ours was just in reverse order. So now if you want to see what a perfect square wave looks like in this harmonic editor, you can click this little arrow and you get all this. See how the even harmonics, there's nothing going on. So this top one is your harmonic editor where you're, where you're going to be basically creating the general shape. And this kind of evens out and smooths out those edges. So for instance, if, if I uh, start to take these out, these bottom bins here, if I start to take them out, we still have the general shape of the square. But the problem is we still have a kind of a square shape going on, the outline of it. But we have all these rough edges. So that's what these are doing. They're smoothing out some of the overtones in the harmonics to make it more of the shape that you're going for. Well, all this is well and cool, and you can play around with it till you're blue in the face, but when you're actually using it in the sense of a sound, let's talk about that real quick. So let me go to, um, let me go to some, just some sounds real quick. So we'll pull this up, see what we got going on. All right, so we have this yeah happening right here, right? So if I click on the pencil editor, we can see here that this is our wavetable down here, and if I click this, this is the harmonic version of our wavetable. Well, instead of using this to affect the wavetable, because this is gonna affect a whole cycle or a frame, and this specific sound is a good amount of frames or cycles, but it's gonna affect the whole thing. What if I just wanna affect certain parts of it? Well, I can do that in this harmonic editor. So now, you can see here I'm on cycle 256. This all isn't going to be affected. This is gonna be, you know, what it was. So you can really get in and finely tune your... So it's just grittier, it's a little bit dirtier, it's a little bit brighter. So I personally love using this, uh, the additive, the, the harmonic editor, on bases and leads that just need to be uh, really big and kind of gritty. So for instance, let's, let's listen to this. All right, so we could really easily dirty this up. So 
So what I'm doing is I'm adding more harmonics, which in turn is going to create more overtones, which makes for a richer sound. But that's what this is in Serum. But for the most part, if you just want to take a simple sine wave and maybe dirty it up a little, let me actually make a new sound. That's where it comes into play, and I, th I, th I think it becomes very handy, is to actually just create some more interesting tonal characteristics to your sound. So if we go to, let's go to a single, load up a sign, hit this arrow to get it into the harmonic editor up here. And if you just want to make it a little bit dirtier, see how it's roughing up these edges? Right, now that's an alternative, obviously, to using uh, these tools down here to rough up the edges. You could use these as well. Um, see, I could do these, but that's essentially the same thing. See, now if I drag this by hitting this arrow into it, we, have, we just created a lot of different harmonics and partials and see it goes all the way out. So it's a really cool tool to kind of mess around with. It, it, I, I find it very effective on basses that I need grittier and maybe the distortion or the filter isn't doing it. Or maybe I need like a really uh, just kind of a bright, brassy, digital type lead, metallic sounding. You can, do, you can do that with that additive type editor here because that's what additive synthesis excels at, the very digital metallic type sound. So it's really easy to rough up any waveform, any wavetable, and give it some new character just by kind of playing around with this. And a lot of times you'll, it'll be doing it aimlessly, but just knowing that, okay, a sine wave is going to be one, one harmonic, a square type sound will be skipping the even harmonics. If you want to do like a saw type thing, it's even odd all the way out. And then down here, this will kind of manipulate the, I look at it as a way to kind of smooth out the edges of the sound to get the shape that you're going for to be more congruent with what the shape actually is like a square or a saw. But again, it's more useful in my opinion to rough up a wavetable or a waveform to make it more interesting. All right, there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll see you next time.